Hello guys, welcome back to another Virago day. There is uh, three tutorials coming up and an extra explanation video about the camshaft bearing. So stay tuned uh, for my channel, please. Uh, loads of information coming in the next few weeks. The first one is going to be a camshaft removal, which is this one. Uh, so the camshaft removal, that's including how to set it to top dead center the bike and how to remove the camshaft uh, for every reason you need it. Uh, for example, if you want to swap the bushing to the bearing again an explanation explanation video coming up about that the second video is uh, not something you would do normally uh, that will come out a few weeks from now it's about changing the rocker shafts there was a slight wear on the rocker shafts so i changed them so that's going to be episode two and if you are only watching episode two then you have to watch episode one how to get to the point where you will be able to get the rocker shafts out and episode three is gonna be a few weeks after the episode two and that's gonna be setting up the valve clearance i'm only showing the front cylinder because the rear cylinder is basically exactly the same just set it up the the flywheel to the to a different place uh, which is the t mark on the on the flywheel you set it up there and you're adjusting the valve clearance uh, on that point of the crankshaft so uh, loads of information coming out uh, in the next few weeks maybe a month uh, six weeks i'm not sure i will have some uh, timestamps in it so if you want to jump into a certain place or like for example you know how to remove of the airbox or whatever is it's not important for you then you can jump to jump to the place where you stuck uh, in your process that's the plan and uh, yeah guys uh, enjoy the video and i see you in part two part three and the extra explanation cam bearing uh, camshaft bearing explanation video so i'll see you guys later First thing to do is remove this airbox so we have just better access what we need. Then we have to remove the spark plug from both cylinders and also we are going to have to remove this uh, cover here and there is a, a nut in there as well so we can get to the, the crankshaft bolt so we can turn the engine over with a, with a ratchet spanner so we can adjust this cylinder which we are going to work on today uh, to the top dead center position. Uh, so there is no load on the camshaft. I upgraded these bolts to uh, stainless steel uh, cap hat uh, like countersink. So yours, if it's original, then it's probably just a JS, JIS uh, screw. And then this is it's got a, a rubber seal on it so it might stick to the engine a little bit uh, strongly but I did put some I did put some silicone spray here so it doesn't stick that bad so I recommend for you guys to do the same we're gonna have to remove this uh, cover nut kind of thing 17 mm uh, socket it shouldn't be tight uh, pretty much uh, whatsoever it's got an o-ring there so it shouldn't be super tight uh, we're gonna swap that o-ring uh, to a new one and there is the the nut what you need so you can turn turn the engine over but uh, before we turn the engine over to the top that center we are gonna have to remove the spark plugs we're gonna have to remove this cover anyway so why not doing it now Gonna have to remove the other spark plug from the rear cylinder. If you check out the link right here, I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, when I'm doing a compression check. Okay, now we're gonna remove the airbox. It's a bolt here, bolt over there, one there, one there, and then the, the rubber, the rubber connection, which is a screwdriver in there. It's probably not completely necessary to remove all these. And probably you can get the job done uh, without removing this but uh, I think it just just gonna make it make it easier the rubber hose from the air air filter going to the frame 
and uh, it's just got a ring clip on it and it slides it off this that one right there just gonna pop it off from the frame so this whole lot we're including that will come off that's it oh, that's off and we're gonna have to break the seal on that rubber by turning the the rubber a little bit and then this whole whole thing comes off hopefully from the frame just like that okay we're gonna check the o-ring in there but uh, I recently rebuilt this engine uh, not completely but uh, I've changed this o-ring so I think it should be okay to reuse it now I'm gonna set up the other camera so you can see both together while I'm turning the crankshaft and also aligning this to the right place which is up there this this hole there needs to align with that one when I do this procedure what I like to do is remove the valve covers so I can physically see what what's the engine what's the engine actually doing you look for that line on the flywheel which is just just a line and then you know that is the top dead center mark you have to remove this or maybe you can do it from the other side but just to have easier access I think it's just easier if you remove that one and obviously that one is a lot easier to remove because it's just out in the air bollocks these are JIS uh, screws because they got that little little dot on the screws so don't mess them up it's a very handy tool this one I bought it in Lido and it's a little, it's a tiny ratchet for for these these bits. So you get this, and you put this five mil ratchet there, and there you have it. You got a tiny bit of a ratchet to get into tight places like that one. <laughs> awesome. I'm trying to do it so you can actually see what I'm doing. But basically I'm just ratcheting it out and then pop off just like that perfect I changed these o-rings to high high tension uh, Viton 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 bonds so I can reuse this probably I don't know 10 times at least because they don't they don't degrade of the oil because it's a very high quality o-ring so I recommend the guys do the same and get the o-ring and of course it's leaking so as you can see it's currently not in the right place so we are gonna have to turn the engine to the right place and uh, by doing that we're turning the crankshaft clockwise and then we're gonna watch the valves what they're doing and then look for the sign over here on the flywheel which is just the line and that will tell you it's in the top dead center now he's doing the intake because the intake valve is going down I'm just keep going down so when the intake valve closed which is now now I can hear the end and I can hear the pistons going up to compression stroke so what we're gonna do is look for the line over here just a single line and that's it it's there single line and the camshaft should be aligned to that notch on the cylinder head just right there as you can see it's on the top after the intake piston comes up we are definitely on top that center now we can remove the cam chain tensioner because there is no tension on the camshaft right now so it's safe safe to remove it uh, but before we do that we are gonna take off the camshaft uh, bolt Shouldn't be that tight. Come on. Alright, let's try again. Maybe it did loose it up a little bit. Eh. 
There you go. Okay. Okay. We just leave that for now, like that. Uh, and we're going to remove the cam chain tensioner, which is this one right here. Uh, to be able to do that, you have to take off the throttle cable from this position because it, it just about slides out. Loosening this up. And this just slides out that way. We're gonna have to loosen up this so we can move the carb a little bit so this can slide out. That's just so you can wiggle the carburetor a little bit. And this is gonna be a little bit in the way, so you're gonna have to pull it back and then you you, you got a bit of a play here. Right, so take this out. So don't forget that the tensioner is still pushing down the cam chain so it will have some resistance coming out so you might want to push it back by hand a little bit and now it's just just got to pull back the carburetor a little bit just a tiny bit pull it back and then it slides out okay so that's your cam chain tensioner we're gonna uh, I'm going to show you how to put it back in when you preload it and put a, a little metal piece in there to keep it uh, unloaded. And now you have a loose, loose cam chain so you can slide the sprocket off by paying extra attention for that pin to make sure it either stays into the camshaft or in the sprocket, but definitely not falling down there. Gently remove the sprocket from the camshaft and looking at that pin but it looks like in my case it's gonna stay in the camshaft okay now we're gonna slide the chain off it's a bit fiddly not my space in here okay as you can see I have upgraded to the bearing as well I will make an explanation and everything uh, why I did that and why it's important and this is the this is the pin which you you don't want to lose and as you can see because we are on top of that center there is no load from the valves on the camshaft so this when you when you take this uh, retainer whatever that is which holds the bearing in the camshaft just simply slides out no washer on this one and I'm gonna grab a magnet and just take that retainer out retainer holder bearing holder just like this and now we can take the camshaft out nice and straight and it should slide out there you have it camshaft Ta -da! with the bearing on and that bearing slides off as well okay i will make an explanation about why i did this bearing upgrade what bearing i used and uh, yeah, what's this all about and why we do this. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching part one of this uh, little mini series I'm doing about the top end of the bike. The next video will be an explanation of the bearing upgrade, why I do this. So that's coming next. And the one after is gonna be uh, a rocker shaft uh, changes and the one after is gonna be a valve clearance adjustment. And I will have a couple more coming up, uh, like uh, sinking the carburetor and setting the idle. So thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for the explanation video and part two, part three, and then the rest, which is coming out later on uh, this summer. And uh, thank you for being here. Uh, consider subscribing and uh, I will see you guys in the next one.